So we're going to talk about the uh, CTF here. So that was a, I don't know, when was the CTF? That was about a month or month and a half ago or something like that. So we were just on IRC like on a Friday when I was at work. And um, John Overhy was talking about it. I was like, oh, that sounds cool. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I told her when no one was listening because it was like five, you know, five ten, and everybody had already bolted out of work because you're not staying five oh five, right? Start sweating or something. But um, yeah, so I signed it up, and uh, I forget who was on Friday. My wife was on town too, so I don't have any friends, so I just sat home in the basement in the dark. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That is, that is a, a command promise. center. <laughs> so we we started up on Friday. It was kind of impromptu, and then um, I forget who. I don't know if it was you, Dennis, or a couple of us were on. I think Friday night. I think you know someone was watching a movie, and we were trying to pick up some stuff, and then uh, it started kind of rolling a little bit. Saturday morning, uh, MWJ was at the car dealership on his netbook, you know, cracking some crypto or something, but. So we kind of got rolling, and more and more people started jumping on. It was it was real cool. We we did we did all right. So I guess we're tenth in our industry in, in eighty four overall out of two hundred. And I don't know. Well, well oh, there, there was students. There yeah, was postgraduate. yeah, post graduate and industry. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so in the industry, yeah, industry. not in our oh, it is, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, I like to think it's all right. I don't know how many people are in the industry. Maybe there was eleven or something, but <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. But uh, so, and I'm I'm D Tom, so we all are hopefully following D Tom. <laughs> King of my sack. <laughs> yes. Streaming live, I think. So, yeah, Derek S. Thomas, and um, you know, we started we really started rolling, and then everyone just started jumping on the bandwagon. We did all right. So maybe next year we can get some people actually organize it. You know, yeah. I got enough computers. Well, if you look at the pictures, they all had that's all they had was beer and pizza. The beer and pizza, and everyone yeah. in one big room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw yeah, one. The one room was all room. plywood. It looked like it was like plywood walls, plywood yeah, floor, plywood one. middle of like a table. It's like they built it right there in the spot. I mean, here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh they. They asked you to submit pictures of your, you know, where everybody gathered, you know, and the IRC logs and stuff like that. So when I looked, when I looked through, that's some of the stuff I saw. Was those college kids, you know, so drinking beer and doing whatever. So. Don't want to see you So, yeah, that's that's about all I have. I don't know. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll flip around and. Various people who presented will, or took part, will present on what they did. Mark couldn't be here, but he did do us the favor of giving us about a five, ten minute quick clip of some of the things he did, so I'll put that up. Stanislav, there's his happy mug. And he helped us out on Recon, a crypto challenge that he worked on with uh, Dennis. Um, Exploit 101, some networking they worked on with all of us, and then trying to reverse Java. Related to Seesaw this year, uh, a couple of the challenges I was working on personally were um, going back and forth from the futile to the very interesting. Um, on the uh, interesting side, that actually worked out on my, uh, my favor. The patch management one was, I think, the last networking challenge that our team had um, just before we were capping off um, the competition. And after I looked at the the context of it, which was a couple server packets had old SSH versions with old Debian versions, um, just having been around when the uh, the situation that Debian had with not quite doing random number generation uh, properly, uh, it kind of ringed right away that that's probably what they're going for. Since they talked about patch management in the title and you know the versions being so old, there wasn't much else you could probably do. Uh, with encrypted packets, unless you could somehow, you know, break that encryption, and generally speaking, OpenSSH wouldn't really have that problem. In this case, uh, that was so. Um, a couple tools later, um, basically, there's a uh, a tool chain version of uh, OpenSSH with the affected um, code set for Debian. 
once you have that hmm. cross-compiled uh, OpenSSH tool chain, you can actually go and um, localize which um, finite one of the key pairs that generated this content was. And uh, looking down towards here, um, you can see the uh, key, you broke SSH, I'm calling the cops, which was in this case the, the flag. So the, uh, the hard part there was actually getting the tools to work. Most of these tools are a few years old, and um, I actually had to break out a, a new virtual box instance of an older version of Debian just to get things to run as one would expect. So um, that one was under the, under the gun, but uh, with a little bit of help from uh, Dennis H. that we were working with and on the team, uh, we were able to knock that one out just in time. Um, Another one that I was able to, uh, to tackle was the exploit 101. It turned out our largest problem with that was actually knowing that, hey, we didn't have to brute force logins to SSH. We could actually just you know, log in with the credentials we were provided for the competition. So logging into the, uh, the shell account, it provided us um, just local user access, um, a binary, suit binary, and then a flag file that we didn't have permission to. Uh, Looking at the, the file itself and kind of trying to break things down, um, I wasn't all that sure what they were looking for, but the fact that it had an input is usually a pretty good sign you're going to have to overflow that somehow. In this case, it was really simple. They didn't actually make you, you know, smash the, or, you know, smash the stack or anything or uh, go into anything heavy. You basically could just throw a buffer overflow to the actual binary, and it would just spit out the key for you without any other, uh, any other effort. So. That was uh, probably why it's exploit 101 if, if it was ever to be called anything. Yeah, that one I remember because I was, we were you know, all working on different parts, and that one came on, and you're like, oh, now I got the credentials. And I don't even think it was a minute before we went, oh, I got the key. <laughs> that just blew my yeah. mind. Yeah, that's, you know, that, that Perl line especially, you know, the A, you know, repeat A 2,000 times, that's like the most de facto, hey, I'm going to buffer overflow this application thing ever. So it, it, mm -hmm. it was hilarious that that happened to actually work. Um, so that that was yeah that was that was a high five moment for everyone I no think. No doubt. Uh, um, another one. I'll pull this screen up. Um, you know I'm not quite sure. Maybe you can kind of refresh where this one was. But essentially what happened there was this uh, email situation where you could email out to a uh, an account that was found I think in the earlier step of the challenge, um, but they were looking for a certain um, uh, sender. And then of course if you're doing a situation where hey, we're going to get an email back from this autoresponder, it has to be forged in such a way that that email will come back to you and not to the actual person. Yeah, that was a fantastic one in terms of teamwork because um, I pulled it down, went through the, uh, the hacks on it, found the uh, email, you know, something like, hey, if you forget the password, email me. And so we had the send to and we had the sender. So I had emailed the sender and said, no, give me the password. And they just blew me off. They're like, hey, if you're not Shirley, I'm not listening to you. Um, so I threw that up on the chat window. And yeah, you were able to spoof their email address. And boom. Yeah, and as, as I recall, that was a situation where, it, again, it was like everyone to the races who can, <laughs> who can <laughs> properly forge an email first. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, so some of those, I think, were more just opportunity. Like this one, um, oh, geez, this wasn't Overhides. Uh, whose was this? Um, not Drake. I'm trying to think of the other uh, the other judge that had a challenge. Mm, I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah. It, well, well, I never Crypto down City. Three or four. But yeah. So you know, we were, uh, that was another one we were chatting about. Well, you know, how what, what would be out there and what's on you know John Overhide's page or what's on this guy's page or that guy's page. And I happened to just joke like, oh, you know, what we should do is just try to do an AXFR and pull down John's entire zone file and look for something. And at that point, he said, "Well, you're getting closer." And I forget who it was, but someone said, "Oh, you know, look at you know, look at the records for text records or this or that." And uh, you know, someone grabbed John's, and at the same time, they were grabbing John's. I grabbed this one. Yeah, and, Dan Guido. Uh, yeah, Dan Guido. So I I don't think they knew going in that they each you know did the same exact thing. But it's kind of funny that you know we got two for one there, especially as hard as the other ones were to were to tackle. So um, you know, some quick judge points there for us. So oh yeah. Um, let's see, and then, oh, uh, <laughs> doubling back inappropriately, um, this one is the SSH decoder, which actually broke down the, the streams uh, from the server and client data, which was able to then parse out to, you know, grab, grab the actual packets we needed to 
see that key. So kind of a cool in progress uh, portion of that. And then on the, uh, kind of lastly, on the other side of the equation, the things that drove me crazy and for good reason. Um, this one, and I'll kind of blow this up slightly. Um, the the last crypto challenge, you know, the the first ones I think were tackled pretty quickly by I believe Dennis H. Um, you know, he got on the cryptogram tool sites and uh, went to town. Um, this last one, Crypto Ten, you know, we were both working on it pretty diligently, and we both were close because it it the cryptogram came out, we we saw it. But the thing about this one was the the secret key that created the cryptogram was supposed to be the key or the the flag for that challenge. Um, what both of us failed to realize, I made this little script that actually took all the letters, mapped them out to what what the key should be, but there were three, I think, three letters that weren't assigned in the you know in the cipher text. So at that point, well, you have these three characters and there's three possibilities, and yeah. So I, my math's horrible, but I'm guessing there's probably nine combinations roughly um, that that could have been. Which order that those uh, you know the key portions were supposed to be for the key, for the uh, ciphertext plaintext map, and knowing that I said, well, you know, obviously they just want the key portion that was used. They don't need the whole key because that you know certain characters weren't actually used. Well, that was our uh, our, our failure because we had the correct answer in a couple different ways. We had the correct answer. We just didn't ever put those last three characters into the order somewhere and try those keys. So, um, yeah, that was 300 points lost for no good reason, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, I didn't realize yeah. we were that close on that one. Oh yeah, yeah, and we were that close for a couple hours at least. Um, I mean, I I rewrote the code three different ways, and it always came out the exact same way. So I knew it. I knew that portion was right. I just never thought, hey, maybe I should try these nine combinations to see which one is the actual full set of the secret key. And uh, I, th I think Dennis was kind of stuck with, um, he never alphabetically ordered the uh, the secret key. That was actually the first thing I did was alphabetically order it because I thought, well, hey, they're probably going to want it, you know, in A to Z order. So um, I just didn't pop in the, the correct pieces. So hmm. that one stung. But um, and the other one that stung, and I still have no, I no, no idea what's wrong. And uh, hopefully someone publishes this sooner than later. The, the Java, so I'm not much of a reverse engineer, but, you know, this Java one, I got a Java decompiler, you know, I had a couple years of uh, some, you know, Java programming classes, so I, I knew my way around and um, syntax and all that. So I was able to recompile, I, I could read all the code, I changed the flags where you would expect them to want you to change flags to, you know, handle things, I recompiled everything. And I could never figure out what they wanted. I, I think I probably input about 50 answers during the course of about a, you know the day or day and a half we were working on that, and none of them ever came out the way you would think they should. And I never saw a phrase or a string or anything in the simple code they gave that was actually key. So hmm. I still still don't know what that one's about, but that one's uh, kind of still haunting me, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I think those I think those were probably the uh, the the primary primary ways I spent a good uh, you know twenty some hours of you know two hours sleep night to uh, to tackle but it was a lot of fun and uh, definitely look forward to another competition like this I think the seesaw folks put on a, a hell of a competition and uh, look forward to the next one fantastic all right is there anything else you want uh, you want to add or is that is that good no I think that's all great things is Matt and I have been having this ongoing discussion about uh, PowerShell versus C-sharp. Because he is the PowerShell guru, and I would go, well, why would you do that? Just open up Visual Studio. It'll take a couple minutes. So we went through the crypto challenges, and we've got examples of how we solved them. Your sides go first. PowerShell, pushing pebbles, he says. <laughs> So we got Matt versus Wolf, which is, you know, who you call them pebbles, man? I mean, come on. This Visual Studio, you can't beat C-sharp. So you want to kick us off and talk us about the first one? Um, this one was actually, uh, I have to say, Dennis and Deton were kind of helpful because I was looking at them like, okay, how am I going to start this? They're like, oh, this is, you know, this is what you're looking at. So I'm like, okay. So uh, basically it's four lines of code and uh, just make an array split it out and PowerShell has a built-in thing to convert types 
that you can string types along together and uh, change things that way. So I just changed the type and out came the string. It was real simple. Oh, I was at the car dealership on Telegraph Road in Taylor. <laughs> And uh, I had <laughs> netbook sitting there, and I actually ended up having to call the car dealership while sitting in their waiting room because I didn't want to leave my laptop or my netbook to ask if my car was done because I was like, oh, I'm still working on this. Oh. <laughs> she was 10 feet away behind some glass. <laughs> Hi, I'm calling you from over Hi, here. Um, is my car ready? She's like, sir, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of decoding ass. Like in the middle of something. Yeah. I remember what you said. It's just hardcore stuff. And, and then, oh, yeah. The first one was actually. Yeah. 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 So I got on the channel, and there's no one there. And the I numbers. was at the dealership. The, uh, Each one of those numbers. So 87 is a character code, 101. Yeah. i got to translate here in a minute. But mine ended up looking like this. So you can see. So who wants like, to use that? All right. <laughs> But for readability, you can see we pass in the string, we split by space, and then I say, okay, for each of the characters after we split it up, go ahead and I'm doing something similar. I'm, I'm taking the code and I'm converting it to an integer. So I go from string to int, and I use that code number to convert it to a car or care, and then I dump the care out. Okay, so it's more lines. <laughs> I mean, I have ones with more lines. I actually have functions written that in PowerShell you can suck in, and they all they'll work. But four lines kind of beats his, so I was going to give him a quick one. So that's a nice pretty one. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I do. So I make a lot the of the first one that you know the key for the challenge is cryptography. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you want uh, crypto two? Um, this one. Uh, this one was hex. I think Dennis or D. Tom again said that's what that is when I was in there. Uh, the nice thing about PowerShell is you have a pipeline. You need so help. You know this. I did have a little help. And it, so the uh, yeah, which is hex. So the nice thing in PowerShell is you have a pipeline just like you do in Bash or you know some other shells. So uh, basically, I'm just taking it and piping it to the different things. I convert it to an integer and then uh, convert it to a char and output the string. It, it's not, um, you know, it's not really. But it, it was just, it was easy because like I'm like, well, I could do it the long way and then like make it really verbose. But I was like, well, I'm sitting on a netbook with like this much screen space. So let's pipeline. <laughs> pipeline is awesome. I don't have a pipeline. <laughs> you can make one. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm basically doing the same thing here, though. Yeah, I, I, that's by using PowerShell. Uh, I'm basically doing the same thing. Instead of splitting by space, I'm just splitting by the, uh, the colon there and going through and looping through them all. And the convert to int is the exact same function as we did last time, but it will support a base. So if you throw in base 16, that's hacked so it knows to convert that. And then I take that number and I throw it in the car. So it's pretty much the exact same function for me other than the base 16. And the next one, this first message is being sent to you by the leadership of the underground. Keys are overthrow. Yeah. This was fun, but this, this was the first one I did, and it gave me a false sense of hope, which is, <laughs> which is probably why .NET buried me, and I won't give it up. But uh, all right, so here's binary. And this really? is this is more than one line. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the five. <laughs> and if I didn't have the whole binary thing, it's actually a whole lot shorter. But um, I'm just pulling out the substring, uh, just grabbing it eight characters at a time, making that into a to a variable, and then just converting it to a and, uh, I will I will admit that uh, Wolf.net helps a whole lot here because PowerShell uses the .NET framework. So all the cool stuff he can do, I can do really quick. 
That is, that's an important thing to point out, is that when I'm in Visual Studio in C Sharp, it basically compiles down and executes on the machine level the exact same way as your code. The, so what we see with my code and we see with your code on the machine level is pretty much the same. I think the big difference, though, in which I struggled when I first started learning PowerShell was that by default, almost everything in PowerShell is an object. So if you know it, with programming, like with C Sharp, you kind of have to make the objects or try to manipulate. But by, with PowerShell, I can just drop it in and an object right away. So uh, I can take that string test and put, uh, pipe it to a commandlet, what they call git member, and it'll show me all the things I can do to it. I can split it. I could uh, convert it to a, an array. I can do all the stuff that's already built in that Wolf has to write, you know, re reinvent the boulder. I have to... <laughs> I just have to no, really tell us what you really think. Call, call it uh, off the variable, and I'm done. So it's it's kind of nice. It is nice. So I had the same problem, which was how to break this up. What I did like about your while loop is how it's all within that one same function, so you're not actually doing a four. Yeah, I the four. The, actually, the difference between the four and this is about two and a half minutes. Really? Um, because there's a commandlet called measure object, so that when you're scripting stuff, you can find out what the quickest way to get something done is. So uh, generally, a lot of sysadmins won't use that, but when you get into the more developer stuff with PowerShell, you start seeing how fast your code can go. And uh, so I wrote it both ways. I have a whole other one that takes about two and a half minutes because the for loop is horribly inefficient. Ah. That's it. 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Yes, that takes 30 seconds. So because my, it, my it's for loop would be your for loop is what you're saying. Yeah, well, I, I'm thinking yours might run quicker though because it's machine code. It's straight, you know, yeah. that's what you're compiling. I'm that's not. True. I'm compiling at runtime. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So I, again, this is this is very similar to what we already did in terms of doing a for loop. Although now I'm. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know that I want it. I don't know what I want to know what he just said. Um, so we divide the length by 8 because it's 8 bits in a byte. Go through a for loop. And again, we're using this to int. But instead of um, saying it's a 16, we say it's a 2, which is a binary. And then same thing, dump it out to a care and, and return all the cares. This is kind of a new, new string. I didn't mention this before. But if you return a new string with a care array, it automatically converts it. So it's automatically coming out of string. The uh, interesting part is when I saw your C sharp stuff the other night and I was, couldn't sleep. I actually re did your exact stuff, just converted over into PowerShell stuff, and it works the exact same way. It's just really verbose. It's annoying. You don't like to type? No. Yeah. What? No, but I can. I have. Yeah, I have functions. Have with, I have functions with it, but I have a function for that. Yeah, so in each one of the phrases, and so if you look at key one, it says, you know, the key for this challenge is crypto, cryptography. If you look at key two, it says, this week's key will be overthrow. And then key three, this week's key, next week's meeting is resistance, and so on. No, that when, you, when you decrypt, this is the string that comes out. Yeah. So like. Yeah. When, when you actually went to the scoreboard, that was that was resistance that what you're putting in is the answer. To, to get the points. Right. It's not the key for as in like like for cryptographic. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, yeah. That's yeah. the answer. But keep that in mind when you get to the .NET one, so you don't have to pick on me too much because on the .NET one, you'll see it says key, and so I spent a lot of time thinking the key for the cryptography is actually the key for the challenge, especially after the honey badger incident. <laughs> We had a honey badger incident. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. We'll, 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 we'll get to that. Crazy nasty ass honey badger. We'll get to that. You want to do the base 64? I mean, obviously um, it ends in two equals, so you know it's the base 64. The, uh, the thing with this is that I'm actually using .NET calls to do this. That's, it's basically what Wolf does, except, you know, not with all the extra stuff. Nowhere else, I think, in, does, is it as clear as in this example, how PowerShell is .NET and C Sharp is .NET. Yeah. Although C Sharp, you get a great Visual Studio and well, debug environment. They said, well, the, the, the good example I was told was that 
Uh, PowerShell is the immediate window. If you ever use Visual Studio, that's what PowerShell is. Yes. Which is not completely true, but that's what, to get .NET developers thinking about this, I have uh, guys at my work now who write .NET who are using PowerShell to write quick code to test to see if their idea works mm. before they go actually write the full C right, sharp code because they don't want to spend all the time doing the comments and everything. They can just write it quick and dirty and it ex and it compiles. And with PowerShell, I can actually take C sharp code and comp it'll compile a whole line of whole bunch of Wolf C sharp code in the console. So I don't have to have like a compiler or anything extra. I just have to make a new object, paste the C sharp code, and I have stuff that I can use in PowerShell. So it's kind of cool. That's good. It's awesome. Yeah, here's mine. Like he said, it's pretty much the exact same thing. We decode from base 64 and then we, you know, get it as a UTF string. And this is where I stop. Yeah. Well, I got I got a slide that says uh, that online was echo and it's bad. I think it's been so <laughs> yeah, his is quicker. Oh, <laughs> see. Yeah, oh. <laughs> you guys are all amazing. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to jump ahead, but when I get to the next one after this, I want to ask you a question about Burp, okay. about Base64. But do you want to say how you're going to do ROT 13? Um, I do have I have semi working code for ROT 13. I didn't work on it during the thing, and unfortunately, my boss pays me to work during the day. So and then as what a are you better applying? excuse, I was at Zenders on Saturday. Yeah. So like you know, chicken dinner over ROT 13, chicken dinner. I totally would have did a ROT 13. And Batman Arkham Asylum came out Tuesday night, so I've been in front of my oh, Xbox, oh, too. <laughs> so I'm going to be honest. So he's got some good excuses. But that's Matt's words of wisdom. Uh, I do. I, I work when I'm not talking to these guys. <laughs> I'm working. So I'll, this is my ROT 13. It's two slides. So I think that's, you know, you had an opportunity really to show me up here, but since you... But see, all the examples that I, all the stuff that I had, I can eliminate your convert to int stuff yeah. with my type conversion thing. The uh, and with in PowerShell when I write functions, I can actually put I can validate the input inside the param statement. So you don't throw so an exception there. I don't throw an exception. I can, but it basically yells it'll it'll tell you that in not so pretty code. But do that you have a Bruce Schneier comment? Right. <laughs> it is. If you don't have a Bruce Schneier comment, it doesn't. So all, all we do here is, is very simple. You know, I just grab the letter. If it's a letter between A and Z, I jump back. You know, X number of characters, ROT13. I, I, when I first looked at this, I didn't know if it was really ROT13 or not. So I wrote my code this way in case it was ROT something else. Um, and of course, same thing with lowercase letters. And then I dump it all out to a car string. I think the name of my function is Wolf's Rotten Apples. <laughs> So then we solve number five. And, uh, one, uh, well, he told me when he told me to say, hey, take a look at five, because I didn't do it, and said, hey, I did five, so why don't you look at it? So he told me. So I don't know, did yeah. one of these guys. So the first thing I thought was, oh, it would be funny if they got this. And so at that point, this is where they, they do all kinds of nice programming. Uh, as I was, I was educated, just as I was in school, I Googled the things that did this. I quickly realized that anything I ever want to learn, someone could learn, and all I need to do is just Google it. Except a working ROT13 PowerShell function. And you can tell by looking at it. 
Yeah, there yeah. are. And I stayed away from those when I was playing with it. Like, I didn't find those during this challenge, but I found them afterwards, and I'm like, no, I, I, I want to figure this out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because anything that uh, .NET can do with math, I can pull in to do. It just it looks ugly from a PowerShell standpoint. Right. But you could also tell, you, someone said, you know, how did you know it was, was ROT13? You could tell because, obviously, E is the most common letter. So you see, we have discovered that our last three, well, just from those first few words, you look at it, and you saw that it was, you know, I think it was U R, what a blah, blah, blah. You saw a bunch of R's, and you're like, well, that's, you know, all E's. It's got to be. So you knew right away it was a rod. Encryption. Well, that's yeah, why exactly. He, that's, that's why I wrote mine the way I did. And that's why when I end up put, because I'll put the function on my website when I'm done writing it, that it will be so that you can just, like it'll default to Route 13, but you can put Route 1 through 26 in there, and it will do the same thing. Right. So that's how you do it. So there's the method. Um, not only this, but there's the actual function. You could paste in the text and then you could basically send in uh, what, what, what the rock was, and somebody understood that. And as you did it, you could do it sort of on the fly between the text. Oh, that's cool. Through it and be like, oh, nice. Yeah. Well, well, I found one right. website that had a rot13 examples for every language. Yeah. Like any, like you want it in Lua? You you can have it and put it in World of Warcraft. You can do you know whatever. It was a ton of different languages. And the PowerShell one was comp like I was like yeah that it, and it doesn't work. And so I'm like yeah. So I'm gonna write back and say here's how it actually works. You should. I'm going to, but yeah. There was like I, but the other thing I'm gonna do is do this all in Python. Teach to learn some more Python. I'm gonna take these and try it that way. Nice. So. Ruby maybe. No, but they bothered me, and you gotta. And you guys, you got to give me credit because I didn't fix them. I was going to, I started to fix them on this slide because they're driving me nuts. And I'm like, you know, MWJ will pick on me. Like, I wouldn't believe. Well, I'm not, it's yeah, not I, only me, that hack will do it too. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I mean, you guys would pick on me. Well, there's he one other. I was going to pick on them, but I, I'm thinking so you, you get credit for picking on them too. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This one was kind of cool. This was the love letter. It was a PCAP file. I can show you guys if you're interested, but. Basically, what was interesting about this is you pulled out this, and this was my favorite challenge, actually. You, you looked at the PCAP, you went through it, and you found this email, and you pulled out this email right here. And you saw, you know, it's from this person, from that person, and uh, it's obviously base 64 encoded. And here's this GB2312. And you looked at 2312, and it ends up being the page file for Chinese. So you're like, what the hell? So I got this. Decode, and I would really like to say what the slide I'm about to show is what I did during the challenge. But what I did was, I'm like, well, what could show Chinese characters? I'm like, I don't know, Word? Would Word show it? Because you couldn't dump it to like a notepad or a command console. So I spent, I don't know how many hours trying to get Word from C Sharp to show me Chinese characters. And it was like every length, it was like, you know, every, oh, it was just driving me nuts. Because it just wouldn't look right. And I think you got on and you had told me. Yeah, so the way I did it. That you had already decrypted it. Yeah, yeah, true. Because I had done it like a night before. And I just had to done the time yeah. because I'm like, I don't want to bother people. So I think we have on the camera. But, um, yeah, don't get to that part yet. Okay. <laughs> so uh, they, uh, they, we pulled this out, and we wanted to try to turn that up at the end. We dropped this, and we're like, oh, here's a cool content email. Um, Is it the next one? It's above that. Yeah. Um, no, so uh, so then if you if you 
when we code it, it's like binary characters, right? So like, okay, well, I'm like, what's that? What's the point of that? And like, oh, it's just binary. So there's no more use. I didn't have a 2012 thing at first, so I was like, oh, maybe I can throw it into like GPA 8, because the GPA security can't have something no one is right now. So yes, I converted to that, um, and basically sign on the website and will basically convert it to a binary computer to access images. Um, oh. And so then, you know, and then you can use nice Chinese characters. <laughs> we will translate to the rest. <laughs> I was kind of shocked that I was able to like copy and paste the actual characters and pull the translate and it's like. So he saw that, you know, by the time he got on the channel, he had already gotten to that point. So I put this aside, but when I knew him and I were growing up, I needed an ace in the sleeve because I knew he was going to be shorter than me. So <laughs> I will always be shorter than so, me. <laughs> Code was, but uh, so I, and I was posting some of the weird things I was getting as I was trying to get this through. But it finally occurred to me that all I really needed to do in base 64, we've already talked about this, is um, dump it to HTML because all browsers display all page files. I mean they have to. And one of the things I wanted to ask you, Z Tango, is does Burp? If I threw this into Burp, would it decode and show you the Chinese characters? Yes, yeah, so we would add some more problem. But all browsers do. They have to. And what's really cool, they have to. They're Chinese. Well, because Wolf said so. <laughs> because I said so. Uh, is if you tell the car set in the meta tags, you know, luckily we saw your presentation a while ago, so everyone knows what this is. So I just put that in there, told it to pre, you know, HTML, dumped out all the bytes, up, and then hit the wrong button, and uh, and then just close my HTML, and and boom, in Chrome, it shows up. There's the there's the text. But it's even better though, is because been set, Chrome displays this for about a second and goes, hey, this is Chinese. Here it is. <laughs> and I'm like, that's awesome. Very nice. So one of the things once we had this was, you know, 201, 5, 128, blah, 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 give me a call. So we're weird thought maybe that was a key, maybe you need the Chinese prefix because they're in Who China. Who called it? You know, you know, I'm making long distance calls to China. I actually threw in like this number with like Chinese like country code. Oh yeah. It's like, well, you know, they, clearly they don't want me to bother them. Like, if I'm wrong, maybe I can't get someone else to take it. Why? So finally we gave up and we called. Who called? I called, we, we but I don't. I wasn't the first one. Yesterday I had a friend over who was like, oh, I'll call it. And he said, I'll take it. So I recorded the call in case you guys wanted to hear it. And so again, to me, this is the coolest thing. PCAP file, email, Chinese characters to English characters to a phone call. And we have the key. Nice. Wow. But I love that. I thought that was a cool challenge. Yeah. I really did. Oh, that, that that was, that was when people next week were asking me, what did you do this weekend? I'm like, well, I took an email, translated Chinese. No, like, you know, huh? Yeah, no, that was, <laughs> that was cool. You tell me, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Really? So this is why these kids yeah, beat us. Yeah. I mean, well, it's kind of. Did, did anyone look up what the area code is? Yeah, is that, New yeah. Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, 
He's like, <laughs> he's breathing heavy. Yeah. Yeah, you have over you. I think. So that's how we solved the first five cryptos, twice. Twice. Maybe no, three times. Three times. But uh, you know what? I, what I thought was really interesting about that is, you know, I always hear about how great PowerShell is and everything, and how it's much more efficient, and I really should learn PowerShell. Uh, but it really did demonstrate how a lot of the same, you know, .NET stuff that we that I do all the time is like blah, 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 one line in the decoder dealership. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I I know I say it like every third word, but like you know, it, it's kind of like the people who like oh Perl does that or Python. You know, like it's just what I chose to work on. And really, the language really doesn't matter. No. Exactly. Well, but what's and from like a security standpoint, though, is that every Windows operating system from now on, it you can't decouple PowerShell. It will be there. And don't forget Windows Core. Yeah. The new Windows Server it boots up to PowerShell. That's so I mean, because I from I was I trying to get a copy. I don't know anyone who has a copy. Does I've anyone here does? Okay. You have it. Yeah. Uh, server eight. Basically, they said and came out, if you can't use, your app doesn't use PowerShell, we won't certify it. So you have to have some stuff to be able to leverage PowerShell for them to be able to say, yeah, that runs on Windows, and we'll help you, you know, get it kind of working when you call support. So, but it's, it's like, it, it's, a, it's a game changer in Windows 8. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, one of two is going to happen. So, yeah, that's that's cool. There's but like with PowerShell like I was lo looking at, you can do everything from firewall rules to you can set your whole server up in PowerShell in minutes. VM drop a PowerShell script in there and the whole server is out. You're you're done with one. Yeah. So, it's pretty cool. You can drop shell code too because uh it doesn't do it bypasses ASLR and DEP because it doesn't actually go in there. So yeah, because uh, Mon Exploit Monday or whatever just is the latest blog post. You go up there, and this guy wrote some PowerShell stuff, and including where I said I can talk Wolf's uh, C Sharp in there, it compiles a little bit of C Sharp, and then you drop the uh, shell code for the Metasploit exploit, and you can run it, and it'll, it launches calculator for you, which the exploit does. So if you can get on there, you can run you PowerShell. You can run any exploit, you know, any stuff that you need to, with shell code because it'll translate it and run it. So, so you need cool. to do a talk for us on, on PowerShell. I keep on I thing. keep on wanting to do that. Yeah, yeah. The the Dave Kennedy did uh, DEF CON I think 18 had a thing where they did a whole bunch of PowerShell stuff and he they use a team suite to be able to leverage this. Oh. Uh, like I've watched it like eight or nine times. So. The the seesaw CTF page. If you just like look for seesaw CTF, I think that's the first. Thing. Oh. There you Corporate go. computer. Second link. Second link. And they actually have a rights right up shape link in now, but challenges back up. It used to not work, but now now it does again. So let's see, um, kind of going through these. Uh, so we talked about Dan Guido and John. I think they kind of covered that pretty well. Um, ended up being DNS text records. Um, once John kind of gave us some hints, it was pretty easy. Uh, dig text on their domains pretty much showed us what we needed to know. Um, I never, I don't think I got Drake's or Dino's. Those are, those I got some slides on Drake's. Yeah, no, I, I saw some write-ups, and I was like, uh, they, uh, if you just, like, search, uh, they're, they're linked here, but there's different groups, different groups just, just like, you know, would release, whether it's on Twitter or, or the web blog or something, they'd be like, oh, we solved this challenge, here's how we did it. Um, so people have just been collecting them. Um, 
posted a, uh, I think on Twitter, if I read ahead, if I saw the number, I did, that Rick rolled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was sweet. The Rick rolled, that's, that's awesome. It was just some phone number. No, was, I, I know the guy who runs that. Uh, <laughs> that's why I was wondering. Okay. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'd have to go back and look. It's it, it's. I think it's. I think it's in one of the IRC logs. They have it. Not choose. <laughs> I also know the guy who put that ad up. <laughs> oh boy. Sweet. Um, there, for a while there was uh, yeah. there was an IRC channel that you could get into that would that recorded the numbers and like then there's also they do like um like central office looked up about where the number was coming from oh, to get the state data. So what you got, man? You want so, me to uh, wait, well, uh, so I'm just going to kind of go through as, as I remember stuff. Um, so most of these were really hard. Um, I think we all tried a handful of these, and I don't think we've got any. I don't know if we have any rates from those. Uh, if, I, I, I've, yeah, I've read a few of them, and I'm like, yeah, uh, that's not how I was going to do it. <laughs> So you then you knew what the like the the actual um, the schema the, was yeah. And then that allows you to put your own thing in and the first element in that in right. the array. Um, and that was the part that I missed. Damn it. No, they were all pretty pretty intense. Though. Yeah, that sounds insane. They're interesting, but uh, they're too hard. So let's see. I'll just talk a little bit about reversing because I spent a little bit of time on at least a couple of these. The Java one I spent a while on. I think I got some more place that uh, MJW got to, which was, you know, you, you can get Java decompilers pretty easy on the web and decompiled it and um, looked at it. And if you look at the code, it was pretty straightforward. Um, it, it was hard to tell what they wanted, though, because there was definitely some functions where it was like, well, some of these. There's a couple of functions where it was clear that they want you probably wanted to like rewrite them, and then recompile it and run them, but we didn't really get very far with those. Um, hmm? I couldn't get mine to recompile. That's where I get stuck. He he seemed to get his stuff recompiled, but I was started fighting Java application compile. Uh, oh, before you recompile it, it was just like I think it just spit out a string or something. And it was, once you looked at the code, it was like, oh, this is supposed to be this. There's, you know, definitely ways of do, making it do other things. And I think you just need to, like, flip a few bits to make it do something else. But we, we, 
didn't end up getting to that. Um, the only other one was the Linux one, which was, uh, I think, an 8 out of nine. So, like, that looks like you went through GDB, but I didn't get too far into it. I had to compile that, like, I don't know if they want out of it. So. And it's 400 points, so it's probably actually kind of complicated. <laughs> uh, so, if go down. These are the exploits that we skipped because, of course, we didn't know how to brute force SSH. <laughs> so we can go past these. <laughs> well, once we figured out how to log in, there's all the crypt that we talked about. Uh, on, in, like, on the web page, like, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like rules. Team or something, yeah. Team. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. But the one thing, there was actually one, that was one interesting, scroll down to, no, too far, uh, it was, uh, the Python one. Okay. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, because it was just a, an, an NC string, right? So you just, like, that would just connect, there was no SSH at all. So I was like, oh, cool. And you got on there, and it was, the, you were in this basically Python shell, clearly. And so it was pretty clear you needed to, like, break out somehow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get that far. <laughs> Sorry, because I didn't get points. Yeah, yeah. I, I managed to, like, I, I was passing some strings to it, and I managed to get cat etsy password, but, so I was like, oh, cool, I've done something. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get any from that. Um, so then crypto, we went through the first yeah, we went know, through five those or so. Six, seven, eight. So, uh, I have to see if I remember these. Um, I'm sorry, I was starting to write up, like, a little bit of stuff last night, and then I fell asleep. So, I apologize. <laughs> um, so the next several were, um, I'm going to forget the guy's name, uh, it's a French type name, uh, but it's basically more substitution ciphers, okay. essentially. Uh, huh? Yeah, thank you. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> CSSP letting <laughs> face off. <laughs> um, and, uh, because, uh, you know, after ROT13, actually it was ROT13 and then the next one was, I think, ROT36 or something. Oh. So, because I was like, oh, I bet it's just, you know, Rot 26 or something, and that didn't work. And I then found a website that would like kind of chug through all the different rots, and it, it found one. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, then after that, I just started looking for like sort of the way I was looking through it, because you know, I'm not a super crypto dude, so it was like, well, these aren't super, you know, these aren't a ton of points, so probably not that hard. What's the next common like crypto people have? And Bernier popped up a lot, so I was like, okay, Bernier substitution cipher. Um, and like I said, there's this great website where you can like walk through the, the different things, and it was it, 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 you can do that manually, and then he has one that'll automatically do it for you. Mm -hmm. Like it'll just walk through it, figure out if it found English or not, and then <laughs> so I, I guess I guess I guess the main point of this this presentation is how I'm not actually that smart. But Google Google. Well, you started seeing it over on the IRC channel. Um, so. So yeah, uh, Blown away. they um, th those were just various versions of that, and you get down to ten. And so I was just plugging them in. And everyone's like, "Oh, you're so awesome!" I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so we get to ten, and ten's the really annoying one because ten's the one uh, I threw it through. I put it through. It's another Vernier substitution cipher, and his tool totally deciphered it. And it says the key you used to decipher this is the key, <laughs> except his tool doesn't spell any key. So I was like. I have encrypted text, I have decrypted text. This should be trivial to figure out. So I mapped all the letters, and just like what he did basically with his program, though, um, and you came up with a string. And I had the key. And I put it in, and it didn't work. And I'm like, this, is, this is literally the substitution key that works. I don't know what else to do. And what it turned out to be, and there's two, there's two things that misled me, were all the previous ones were like a single word. And so I figured, oh, this is going to be just a single word. And the key I had was just a jumble of letters. And I was like, well, this isn't going to really equate to anything. But it, what it was, it wasn't, I forget what they call it, it's like an offset cipher. What it was was basically a key, and then that that's what you use to, like, map the first whatever letters. And then what you have after that is the rest of the alphabet in alphabetical order minus the letters you used for the key at the beginning. Uh, okay. And, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that might be what it's called. Well, right, the, key, the, the, the key's first, then it's the rest of the alphabet minus any of the letters you use to write a key, right? So it's pretty 
pretty, it, it's, it's not a, yeah, it's not, you know, a complicated one. And what it turned out once the, the answer came out and I looked it up was I had it backwards. When I had done my mapping, I had done it, like, in one direction, and if you do it in the other direction, oh. right, it's, it's the key and then the letters. And like, so I, I should have been able to get it, but I don't know. I must have, we were all kind of burnt out. By we were real damn tired about it, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, forensics, Android. Oh, so Evo Burritos one I did. Um, so this is this is the fun of you know living on a Linux box. Was you grab this core file right, and there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but uh, there's a really nice utility on Linux called Strings. What Strings does is it looks for any ASCII characters and just dumps those out, so you lose all the binary, and you can see it's very useful if you're ever looking just to like. You have a program and you're trying to figure out, you know, oh, there's a copyright information, is there any library information? You're trying to troubleshoot something. So I just dumped the core through strings. And right, like, so you can have a nice hex editor. This is kind of hard to read. Uh, with strings, it just dumped essentially all this out, just, just like that. And so it's like, oh, well, here's what they need. <laughs> so the key, the key for this one was pretty easy. They just wanted the email, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so you just grab the email out of that. So it was literally like, Five seconds. <laughs> well, it was a, little, a couple more. Well, probably from, it was five seconds for Mark. Oh yeah. Well, because <laughs> he got it. But I started emailing like, "Hey, give me the password. Will you please give me the password?" Oh no, but see that does the next part. Pretty please give me the this, password. This is the first one. This is that you're talking about the second one. No, you, is, you, really, it's two yeah. different challenges. Yeah. This was the Evil, Evil things. No, down one. Evil burritos one. Yeah. And it says, "Can you find and follow me?" Just find the email address of someone from Evil Rituals. Oh, okay. So you just need to grab the email from the site. I so that's yeah. why I'm thinking strings, Evil too. Email address, bam. Right. Boom, done. What commands do you use on Linux? Strings. Strings. Yeah, I should have done mine. Um, <coughs> I probably should have done my bank transfer. We're going to have to get better Linux. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's like one of the like, most basic. Yep, what are just strings and your binary file? Um, the Android ones I didn't even try. I was worried that Jono had a hand in those and figured they were yeah. going to be sort of terrifying. We're screwed. Um, so then we get to networking, which is sort of like my, my favorite, which was, oh, PCAPs. I know PCAPs. I can do these. So uh, we'll talk about Honey Badger now, I guess. If that's right. All right. Just a second now. <laughs> yeah. Sun, Z, me, and DCOMs. <laughs> so do you have the PCAP for it? Because this, yes. this is this is this I've got the PCAP. This is kind of interesting. And I've got the Google. All right. So the so the PCAP wasn't wasn't too bad. Um, it was a 101. Yeah. So you walk through and you're like, oh, okay, you know, it's 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 H and HTTP session. And towards if you scroll down, there's uh, at some point at some point basically Wireshark does all the work for you and it puts together the all these HTTP segments. Yep, and you want me to go where it takes you? Uh, sure. This it's, is the URL it gives you. Yeah, so so what it actually does is, um, well, see if you can, I don't know if they're interested in this, but if you can find it in the PCAP, uh, I'm trying to see where, where it was. Because what it does is, um, at first you're like, oh, it's some sort of Google search. Because they're like, oh, what am I looking for? And you're de they're definitely talking to, you know, the Google search engine. But what you'll find is the URL is actually there search by image. And the way search by image works is when you upload an image, it actually basic 64 encodes the image, adds that as a string, and so in the PCAP, there's this base64 string, so you pull that out, code it, and you get the honey badger picture. So you take the honey badger picture PNG, upload it to Google's search by image, and then you get what he had for the search. This comes up. This, this set of things. And, okay, so the first one's the YouTube and other things. And, and, and the question is, what am I searching for? There's a Honey Badger PMG. And we tried every freaking thing. Honey Badgers don't. And we, we tried so many. I think we missed one. I, th I think what you ended up getting was one of the ones we tried, but we either we screwed up the spacing or added too many spaces. Yeah, well, 
No, I know. This is where the wiki, we just, were like, oh. Just to give you guys an idea, we tried so many. They had, the CTF had a, a, a IDS or, you know, something set up. So if you were trying to brute force it, it would kick you out. So we yeah, got kicked it, out. It locked we our had account. to get John, you know, John on the phone, say, look, or not on the phone, over Twitter, say, look, we didn't, we're not trying to brute force, we're just trying to guess. We're just retarded. So. <laughs> so you we had to go life. talk to the guys and get us unlocked because we got, you know, bounced up. Because <laughs> five of us were basically all just going. Honey Badger, Nasty Ass Honey Badger, just trying every version. Yeah. Right, right. That's, yeah, that's, the, that's, that's, that's why he interceded is because it's supposed to lock you up for a little while, but be like, all right, well, you can get back in. But it, if I think there was a bug where it wasn't, like, limiting itself, and, yeah, at some point we were, it was five days. It was five days. We're like, no, we should be going. Oh, i got 24 hours left of this competition. It was the title, and we're like, well, "How did we miss this?" Yeah. <laughs> because I think we were looking at it as Friday night, like first thing, and it went all the way to Sunday. Yeah. So, I, but I got to give it up to you, man, because yeah. we, yeah. we thought we had like double checked everything. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, it was terrible. This is the one I don't like the most <laughs> because. And we talk about doing our own CTF or something for B-sides. It should have at least a few different variants, you know what I mean? If people have the spaces in the wrong or whatever, it should be a little bit more tolerant. Because we wasted so many hours just trying to get. Well, what's funny is if you go down the Google page, right, there's like, there's a, there's a lot of, you can buy mugs and shirts. I'm trying, I'm like, shirts? I'm like, yeah. I'm yeah. trying, gifts? Yep. They're looking for gifts. Yeah. Uh, don't care. Yeah. I tried the MD5 of the image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did steganography to see if there's anything on the image. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding you. But, but, you know, it was 100 points, and we're like, it can't be hard. It's 100 points. Yeah. It's, it can't be this hard. That's, that's we must be missing fun. something. <sighs> Killed it. So. Anyway, Honey Badger. I, mean, we must have, I bet we all probably listened to that thing like five or six times. Yeah, yeah right. maybe he's just key in the so middle of it. <laughs> No, I don't know why that's a huge. It's just, it's right just now. internet mem, you know. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, we saw that way too many times. It is, but, it is uh, funny when the snake bites them. The USB one, I was pretty impressed that you were able to pull that file. All right. So, so. Do you want me to get that PCAP? Up? Yeah. That, that's, also, not as impressive as you think it is, but it, it was cool. I was, I was happy when I finally got it because it was that's driving me crazy. Yeah. So first of all, I pull it up and I'm like, "Son of a bitch, uh, why why a shark can do USB captures? That's so cool." <laughs> I had, I did not know that. In Linux only, yeah. There, you can. I think there's some Windows stuff. Yeah, you're literally sniffing the bus. And you're pulling the raw packets off the USB bus, and that's, and that's this is what it looks like. What they did with the Kindle we were talking about this morning. <laughs> they put it on Linux and they watched over the USB bus and grabbed the packets. So you go through this and you're like, all right, well, you can kind of scroll down. Actually, it's towards the end, so it's fine. You just look and you're like, I don't know, what's Got going on to stop. It's it's doing the thing. It's getting some descriptors. You know, here's it's talking to SCSI, and you're like, well, okay, SCSI bulking out. Maybe maybe that's something. You know. Because they're basically, what's the MD5 of this image? So you realize that, okay, at some point somebody is pulling an image off this drive, or whatever it is, and we need to ex extract it. Right, and then run MD5 on it. So that should be easy. <laughs> so what you do, so what I did first is I was like, you know, I don't know this stuff. I was, I was Googling around for all sorts of utilities that might you know, do this for me. Um, and one of the things that they had actually talked about in another challenge was file carving, 
Um, and which I wonder, I might have skipped it. I don't know where I'm here. scrolling to. Oh, that's fine. You can just you can, <laughs> you can stop scrolling. And okay. Actually, actually, I think that might be it. Um, I think that's it. Um, yeah. And so what you can take this this PCAP and throw it through what's called a file carver, and what oh, that yeah. all that does is auto, many files have headers and footers that are standard, right? Yeah. And all a file carver does is has a list of those and goes, hey, did I find those two things? I'm going to cut that out, carve, and just drop that into a thing called file dot whatever extension I think this is, and you're welcome to look at it. This is very useful if you lose your hard drive, you know, it gets corrupted, and you can pull off all your secret images that you know, can get burned in there or something. And so I threw it through in there, pulls out an image. Yes. This is simple. <laughs> well, when you pull up the image, it's corrupted. I, uh, I think I have, I don't know if I have an example. I might have a laptop, but basically, if you pull it up, it looks like a JPEG that has a lot of noise in it, right? You kind of you kind of get part of it. Um, I'm trying to remember which image it is. Uh, I think it's come at me, bro. Mm -hmm. If you want to look that up, it's an eagle. <laughs> it's an eagle with like this muscle arms, this you know, title come at me, bro. It's kind of yeah. It's it's yeah. It's another mem, right? And so it was like, all right, well, it's got all this noise in it. So I was like, well, I can't just use this. So the key here is what you had to do was use Wireshark. So if you select, uh, if you click on one of these data in one, I think. Yes. If you drop the SCSI payload, uh, yeah, in the bottom. Yes. Right. I think this. Oh no. Look to your your B bulk in the, okay. the one right above it. Yes. Yeah. Scroll down. I just want to see. Oh, it's. Uh, it might be further down. I can't see where the scroll bar is. Yeah, go to it like about uh, three quarters of the way down. Somewhere down here. Uh, yeah, these are because they're see the size. 4160. So this is like you're finally getting the things that are actually transmitting significant data. So this is one of the places I started looking. Um, so if you scroll into here, if you look at the actual hex of this, um, scroll down in there. I need to get the data part. That's all nulls. Maybe it's not showing. I'm just looking for the JPEG star. Yeah, so at some point, and I have to find the, the, the right one, um, there you, you see it's like. Can I find it as ASCII? Uh, yeah, I think so. You should be able to do a find pack at JPEG, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, it's not JPEG. It's like, it's literally the, 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 the magic string, so it's like zero, it's like zero seven ninety. If you if you want, you can Google uh, JPEG magic string probably. You find what it is. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what remember what it is off the top of my head. Okay. Um. But anyway, what you do is you find that the beginning, um, that that beginning string, and there's a footer, and you find that, and what you can do in Wireshark is you can select all those packets, and you can basically save as all my selected stuff. And yeah, there you go. And the the trailing one is like FFD nine or something. I think. Um, and uh, so that should be. I think that's going to be. The, is it the hex one? There it is. Yeah, yeah. J yeah. fifth. There you go. So what's interesting about this? So if you scroll up a little bit on this one, uh, no, in in the hex itself actually, if you scroll up. So it kind of noticed that there's uh, in the hex itself. You'll see. 80DA, uh, D4BA, and a bunch of zeros right before the, the header, right? Yeah. So go to the next packet. Oh, next packet. Yeah. Same, same bit, right? Mm -hmm. I have a JPEG that has these striations of noise. Uh, so uh, the key here is what's happening is there's USB headers on these that oh, aren't I being see. stripped out by the file carver. The file carver's like, hey, I found the start, I found the end, and just crammed them all together. What file covers do. The noise is these USB headers. 
So, mm -hmm. and I, there might even be footers, I don't remember. But basically what, what I did is I looked on the each one, and you can do this Wireshark, and you can export by like, so, so I basically exported all these together, and then took a hex editor, and was like, well, I know what this pattern looks like, and just remove that pattern from everything. Got a perfect image. MD5 didn't work. I was so mad. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So it took me a little while. If you go go to the last one that's 40, or probably it might be the pot, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is it doing? <laughs> it's like you have the button clicked. There you go. Dot hack, what'd you do? Um, yeah, it's a little further. What are you doing with that hack? That's up. But th th the key here is what you'll see is at the footer right after the the yeah the five seven six. So if you scroll down in this in this one in the in the hex itself, there's um. There it is. So you see how it ends in uh, is it the F no FFD9. So FFD9 is the end of JPEG. Yes. And then there's a bunch of nulls. And then there's these four little bytes. And what they did, and my guess is they did it to, they just added some bytes just so that if you figured out what the image was, you couldn't. Because this is, I actually tried this. You couldn't go to Google find the image because I would. I'm like, okay, I know what the pixels are. And I thought I found exactly the image, and it still didn't work. So I think they added a little noise at the end, which JPEG doesn't care. It just ignores it if you look in any viewer. And the MD5 included those five bytes. Oh, wow. Or four, or whatever. So yeah. So I eventually got it, because it was like, well, maybe. It's like, this isn't part of the JPEG, but who knows? But yeah, so that was cool. That was very yet awesome. frustrating. Very <laughs> awesome. Mm. And it was a dot, dot, dot text. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it? It's, it's a fun exercise because you kind of get an idea and then you're like, you have an appreciation for the tools, but you're like, yeah, I'm not going to do this by hand if I don't have to. <laughs> right. um, yeah, so that was a good one. Um, yeah, Steve? Wireshark doesn't have something like a follow, file, follow, file, follow, file, file. No, not, it, I don't, it doesn't, I mean. It, not that, not I yet. Because that's what I did. I yeah. would, oh, I'll just find, you know, follow the stream. And now. Yeah. I, I tried a bunch of that stuff because I didn't under, I couldn't figure out where the wh what I finally ended up doing is once I figured out the file cover might actually have gotten the right thing is I was like oh it's looking for this magic string and so once you do that if you search you, you know, like just like what you did if you search for the magic string bam you get right to the right section yeah and that, that was the key can you see if carve is in here because there was another carve one that I think I did carve yeah it just searched for the word carve because it was that was part of the no? No. Huh. I don't know said down on the file cover. Oh, you know. You can go back to the network. No. Finish this up. Um, so Evil Burritos 2. That was the email. Yeah. Did you have any more you want to say about that? Or no, just I, I thought that was fun because, you know, we, we, we already, I already showed the hacks. You know, Mark started yeah. us off saying how he ended up solving it, but I thought that was just good teamwork. Yeah. I, w I mean, I was sort of in the same place where I had, like, with strings, I'd already had the email like from the first challenge a long time ago, and I'm like, I saw the email, I saw what it said, and I'm like, I don't know what they want here. But they're like, please turn the password. So I figured it was buried in the PCAPs more, right? And so when you guys were finally tar talking about like, oh, maybe it'll actually respond, because I was actually thinking, because it looks like it's a MUT, like yeah. memory dump, 
And I was like, oh, well, maybe it has the IMAP password, and you log into the IMAP server. And so I was, I was going down that road. Right? Oh, neat. And had a bunch of that stuff. Like, I, hadn't, I didn't have the credentials, but I was like, but <laughs> when it turns out, as you guys say, it, but their, uh, their spoofing was very, very limited. All you had to do was change the from. Yeah. So, <laughs> once we knew that, we were like, oh, yeah. This I think that's where, where Mark, having it all set up is, is really handy, because Mark already had set up. I'm like, well, yeah, I could set up an SMTB relay. Well, no, you didn't even need to do that. Like, with Mutt, all I did to get this is I changed my, in the from header, so you can just change oh, that. Yeah. So I changed it to that, the guy, the girl's email address. That's it. And you send the email. That way over time. Yeah, but it, I know. That was, we, that we, was we, we, were the one where we were racing, and people had setting up SMTB servers. Yeah. But I think we all got the email at the same time. That management we already uh, talked about. Email reader. Love letter we already talked about. Uh, yeah, patch mail and then love letter. Yeah. The love letter, uh, love letter, and Evo burritos were my two favorite ones. Yeah, those were good. But I, I really liked the, the the. I would have liked the first networking one because it was. I thought it was. At first, it was interesting. Yeah. First five seconds because it was interesting that you had to dig out that they were doing a search by image, and the image was in the data, and you had to extract that you image. Throw the image, throw it and in. And throw it in, and you're like, oh, cool, I'm here. That was fun up until that point. Yeah, and then four hours <laughs> and of the, guessing. Four hours of out. guessing the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, for a handful. Yeah, no, I, no, I, no, totally. We, we, we worked on it like a ton on Saturday, and then you jumped in on Sunday, and you're like, yeah, I got it. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got one more challenge to show, but do you have anything else that you wanted to? No, no, that's, right that's pretty much it. Eric pointed out, you know, we came in 10th uh, tenth in, tenth in industry. You know, in, in the 80s overall, and a couple hundred people, and it just amazed me. <laughs> it really amazed me how great these students were, how great all, all these other teams were, and, and how fast, really. And, and so I was kind of joking around when we were exchanging slides, Matt and I. I was like, okay, I can sum up my uh, contribution to this entire project <laughs> with the following picture. Is, I just felt so slow. So the last challenge I want to show you guys is, uh, is named Deceptively, Students Easy. And that was the one I did, and uh, it's it's kind of uh, I didn't put it in time. I started it during the session and worked overnight on it, and then worked the next week and the following week and the week after that, and and, and maybe uh, easily over a hundred hours and maybe two. Talked to scores of people. Uh, I'm trying to get some help on it. Uh, worked a bit with Charles Green out of Japan, who uh, Derek and I worked with a lot in the past, specifically on the SimWitty. So he's definitely, you know, very talented in, in math and uh, and in, in .NET. And it just took a long time to solve. So uh, here, let me show you what that challenge was. The challenge itself said to reverse this these files and the files are right here again students easy gotta love the name and you see we got a dumper file a DMP and uh, this readme so you know real simple yeah you open up reflector say hey show me what's in dumper prep and that pulls out the code and right away, you know, I, if you imagine where my mind was at, we had just came off those those crypto keys, which weren't really cryptography, they're encoded, right? They're not encrypted, they're encoded, and they're ASCII and ANSI and everything. So I thought, oh, this is, this is simple, we're going to do great. And right away I see key, so I'm like, oh, this is fantastic, you know, I, I got this one. So we, we peeled a part of it, and uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. where are you? There you go. There's the key. So, of course, I tried that key, and I tried every variation of that key I, I could try, exactly as it was, no spaces, all lowercase, all uppercase, um, bytes, uints, everything. Um, I mean, there's a different way of showing uints where it's not in hex, 
It's actually the, the actual number followed by you. We tried that. Everything you can think of. And just uh, could not get it. So, you know, what do you do? What do you do right when you don't understand anything? The fallback plan is, let's actually read the directions. So you look at the readme, and it, it gives you this spiel about being a college student. You find this PC. Um, you notice it's a server. And you see this uh, dozens of dump files, and you don't need to fuzz it. You just want to look at the core dumps, and there's your bugs. But there's one hitch. These core dumps, these core files are encrypted. So after poking around, you find the command line tools, the dump prepper, takes the file name and encrypt it. And then your job is to reverse engineer the program to decrypt the program. Okay? So hey, no problem. All right, we got the key. My first thought was, well, let's find the decrypt function. As you can see, there's only an encrypt and a process block. So what I did was I pulled this code out. So I'm going to close this. I created a new project, which will open in Visual Studio. And, uh, and I threw the code in and made sure it worked. So the first thing I did was simply mimic the encrypt in the process block code so I could go ahead and, and make sure that I was encrypting you know, I, I correctly reverse engineered it. And you can see right away some some things from this encrypt function, right? It's slicing out uh, a couple uints at a time. So it's doing two uints as blocks. So we know it's a block cipher. It's, it's not uh, it's not chaining, so it's not taking the, the encryption from one block and feeding to the next. So it's a simple block cipher. It's doing two at a time, two UNs. So that tells us it's a 64-bit uh, encryption algorithm. We know that the key is four UNs. So that tells us we got a 128-bit key. And uh, we see here uh, the process block 040x, which of course is hexadecimal for 64-bit. For 64, so we're doing 64 rounds, 64 bits at a time, 128-bit encryption. No problem. So the first thing I did was, because I looked at this function, like I have no idea what this is doing, is I spent a massive amount of time, and really the, the total amount of time during the, the challenge, trying to find an encryption algorithm that was native in .NET that would allow me to decrypt it. So we tried AES, we tried um, we tried Blowfish, we tried Two Fish, we tried uh, either Des, Triple Des, all the basic ones. We were, we were, you know, I posted this up in post, um, in paste bin, and we were all taking a look at it and trying to figure out what it was. And uh, we just couldn't figure out what the encryption algorithm was. And I've, you know, since talked to a lot of people, and the, the common consensus is this is um, XT, so XTEA. And uh, the only challenge here is, for whatever reason, the standard XTEA li license or libraries, the standard XT libraries, won't decrypt it. So we throw the key into it, and it still gives us garbage. Um, so <laughs> what, what I've been doing um, ever since the challenge wrapped up, and actually I, I finally solved this last weekend. I was on vacation, so I was poking at this over vacation, is writing a decryption routine. So the decrypt routine looks very simple, similar to the encrypt routine. We're just going through, pulling a couple uints, and running it through unprocessed block, same thing, 0x40 rounds with um, two uints and 128-bit key, and then returning your plain text. So unprocessed block, you notice, looks fairly similar to the process block, uh, but actually what, what was killing me was this right here is that you had to process these two bytes separately through all 64-bit rounds before you went on and did the whole routine. So if you notice, when you're actually um, doing the uh, encryption, you do numbers or bytes 4 and 5, units 4 and 5, within the main loop, whereas when you decrypt, you got to do it outside. And, and I'd love to tell you why that is. <laughs> A good friend of mine out of Texas who uh, teaches math at, uh, at, a, at a college out there was the one who pointed that out to me and, um, and that was able to solve it. So once we got that, we were able to decrypt the file. And one of the things that actually threw me off was if you run a hex editor and you look at the decrypted file, 
So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, show me my decrypted file, which is Students Easy. And again, I love that name. Yes. The first thing you notice, this is all dollar signs. So this is supposed to be a, a core dump, and I was expecting core dump values. And believe it or not, uh, about the first week into me playing around with this, I had solved it, solved the challenge, got all these dollar signs, and I went, no, nah, this isn't right. I threw it away. <laughs> because you, you look at a whole bunch of dollar signs, you think, I must have screwed something up. But if you look at this file in a text editor, which I will do here as soon as I get my window up, you see that it actually does indeed contain the key. So I actually had to solve this this twice. And since solving it, Dennis H. has, has been very kind, and he pointed out, well, Wolf, you know, like I said originally, I was feeling like uh, very slow, <laughs> like like that image of a turtle I threw up here just a minute ago. I mean, indeed, this this was exactly how I felt compared to these students who were able to solve this real quickly. And uh, Dennis H. just pointed out, hey, you know, Google is your friend. And if you look at this number five and you throw this into Google, which I'll do here, you search on that number and up pops XT, which is awesome. And you'll notice that there is our decryption. So, <laughs> which is not I exactly identical to, to my uh, final solution, but fairly close. So what I could have conceivably done, and, and what I wager a lot of these other people did, was they, uh, they Googled on that value, found this page, and simply used this function. <laughs> so lesson learned, um, Google is your friend. You know, these, these solutions are uh, were a lot of fun, but a lot of the time could have been saved had uh, had we not tried to do them the hard way. Although, great things were came out of it and uh, great things were learned. That's it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> that half, man! <laughs> yeah, I thought you knew about this. So we are here live. Oh. Poor dot hack.